G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, it has been three and a half years since I first bought the Sadeless, the Hobby Boss 1350 SMS Sadeless. It's a uh, basically a battle cruiser from World War One. This kit was voted number one by my patrons and YouTube members as the number one kit they wanted to see next on my build list. So, finally, after all that time, I've made a start on her. And uh, I've made a base, I've done a few things, got the hole together, and there's some scratch work. Would you like to see that? Okay, roll the music. <laughs> Since first buying this kit all those years ago, I've invested in some aftermarket. I have some brass barrels, they're always good. Not only do they make the turrets a bit heavier and they sit better, they don't break like I always end up breaking and bumping and snapping off plastic uh, barrels. But no, these brass barrels will do the trick and they always just look that much better. I also scored this. It's a brass mast set. Now I did this on the Varag. So if you want to go back and look at the series on the Varag, I put a brass mast in for that. And it really looks so much better. It's thinner because there's no way they can get the plastic thin enough without it being so fragile that it just falls over. So the brass masts look fantastic. Plus there's heaps more detail than what the kit provided. And I've scored a wood veneer deck set. Now I really like these. Mainly it's, it's a big mask so that I basically can spray the whole plastic deck part, put this over the top and it just pops through all the gribbles and they're already painted. Don't have to worry about any detailing. It's all done for me. But I just love the, the effect of real wood and I'll, I'll also add some shading to it, a few other things just to basically make it look a little more realistic. Comes with chain, but there's chain in the kit, so that's good. So this is basically all the bits that I'm going to need to um, build this. Now, years ago, I did do a little bit of a start. I glued one side of the bulkheads into one half of the hull, only because the Becker was coming around all the time trying to steal this kit because he wanted it. So I quickly glued those in and said, can't have it now, I've started it. So moving on now, let's get a start on the build. If you're having trouble getting the bottom of your hull to line up as I am there, one trick is to use the deck. Pop it back in. Even if you're not gluing it, just click it back in and with the rubber band there, it'll basically hold to the width that it should and therefore the hull sides will be squarer and that joint will draw up. Well, at least it'll be easier to draw up. I'm still needing rubber band here and I'm making sure that I'm rubber banding the stern and the bow. They're okay and they seem to be gluing fairly well. It's not a problem there, but you don't want to accidentally pop them out while you're fiddling on the middle. So finding some secure points, I've made sure those are nicely steadfast. Okay, what I need to do now is address that split. My rubber band is doing a fairly good job there in the middle, but really we can go further. We need something to assist in drawing that up. It's really good at the end, really good at the bow, Yep, no problem there. That's doing a reasonably good job, but this one is a problem. And it's probably because there's a bulkhead in there that I hastily put in years ago, and it's just a little bit too wide. It probably needed a bit of sanding or whatever. It needed checking, and unfortunately it's too late now. Everything's glued in. So I'm going to take Revel Contactor, and I'm going to slather it everywhere. Normally you wouldn't want to do this, but honestly, this will work. We're going to try and weld this shut, and lots of that will basically go into the gap and then we'll hold it. We use Tamiya tape. Tamiya tape here will be the first thing that I'll do to try and draw that together. Use a nice long piece that's going to wrap all the way around and put it over the rubber band. 
because that makes the two things work together in unison. So that's helping to draw it a little bit more, but we really, we're really fighting here. I need to get that much tighter. So the next trick is string. Yep, good old string. Now there are a couple of tricks to getting this really tight. One of those is when you do your knot, do it a corner. Don't try to do the knot in a sort of a flat space. Find a corner or pull up on it. It really makes a difference to getting that knot nice and tight. The other trick is don't tie it at the point in the middle, the widest point. Slide down as I've done, a little bit away from there, so that you'll be able to push it up later towards the middle and it'll get tighter again. So there's a couple little tricks there for basically getting your string nice and tight. There's another trick and that is you can worry the string out with a spacer. In this case I'm using a peg and that'll push it out and tighten it up as well. All of those things are going to make sure that piece of string is really doing its job pulling hard to draw those two hull halves together. Now to make sure that that bow and the stern really stay in place and they're holding quite well is to put contactor on the inside. Again slathering it right into that join and everything's held together by those rubber bands and we've got a good tacky join anyway from before but that is one way to make sure that is going to weld completely shut because you don't want this hole coming loose later on. The um, stern here needed a little bit of bracketing just to hold those, um, those little fins there in place but it's not too bad. All right now here's another trick. Tell me extra thin on the outside. Now this will dissolve that glue that I put everywhere looking rather horrible and it'll try and smooth that out but it also will through capillary action will go into those gaps so it'll meet in the middle you've got rebel contactor inside the hull really welding everything together and then I have Tamiya thin on the outside of the hull just falling into that tiny gap and making sure everything is nice and glued. I'll also give this a bit of a squeeze in a sec because now that I've got those glues in there I just give it a bit of pressure, making sure I don't get any glue on my fingers. And look at that. I think we're nearly there. The front's good. The back's good. All I've got to do now is wait for that to dry. It's the next day and it's all dry. And I've also put on some Mr. Surfacer there. I smeared that on last night. Left the whole thing to dry. And I'm going to get in there and give that a good sand down shortly. All right, here we go. Step five. Now I've jumped ahead in the instructions here and you may see I've sanded down the hole there it's looking nice and smooth. I've gone from one to five because I want to add all of these prop shaft covers and they need to go on now because often they need puttying in the whole thing needs smoothing and that's all part of the lower hull. I won't put the shafts on, I won't put the tiny little brackets that hold up those shafts at the end and I won't put the screws on. I'll leave all those for later because I'll knock those off otherwise. But it's really important at this point to do these. Now here's the trick. If you've got to feather out, if you've got to like sand out to an edge that's in a you know, triangular point, if you, um, if you start at the point, you gouge a big hole in it. But if you start in the center of the side that you're going to glue, well, no one's ever going to see that. And if you scrape that out and slowly work towards the end, then you'll never ever dig a great big hole in that uh, little flange or that little triangular edge. So that's a good little trick to do, uh, to know. It took me years to figure out that one. I buggered up quite a few of these. All right, a bit of a sand, and um, that should be just about ready for me to do a dry fit. Yep, they're looking pretty good. Okay, the other thing is on the top, it's a curved surface, and we've got to cut off some sprue nubs. Now, they're always a bugger. The way I do it is slowly at increasing angles, work your way around while pressing hard to the bench. So cutting at quite an angle and then making it more acute, and that way you don't, again, gouge a big hole in the thing. And then very gently scraping back and forth to basically line up with the profile of that curve. Because curves are a bugger. They are my bane. Bit of a sand, and that should come perfectly smooth. And you'll never, ever know that there was a sprue join there. Yep. That's my tried and true method of solving that problem. All right. This is all looking quite good. I really want to get on with that dry fit and get these glued to the hole now. Can you hurry up, Harry? Yes, yes, we've seen that. Looks good. Here we go. Right. Test fit. Yep, that one's perfect. That's good. And I mean, always test fit here. These can be bowed or warped. You know, you've got to check that there are problems now before committing because I'm going to put quite a bit of glue in here. I want these to stay 
nice and solid. And yes, it is disappearing off the top of the screen. Mr. Cameraman, Basque. <laughs> uh, so putting this in now and making sure that it goes in nice and firm. Don't worry about all the splodges and the stuff coming out. We'll fix that later. The trick is to get this in so it's not going to come out down the track. It's the last thing you want. Because at some point you will bump this, at least I will, and you don't want them falling off because that's a bugger. Especially if you've got all the trouble of putting it up and you've got a nice paint job and then you break off one of these things. Okay, on with this one. And again, click it in. There we go. Bit of a firm press. That's good. Now, those little messy bits there. Not a problem. Tammy Athen to the rescue. Again, I use this trick all the time. It's a good way to get the best out of both these two different types of glues. Contact her, holds it in place, Tammy Athen smooths it out. And when you do it right, you get that. I need to look at the stand. I want to get the stand set up and the holes in now. But I'll, I'll remove it later for painting, don't worry. Now, you don't want them too close together, you don't want them too far apart. You just kind of work out a way. And the way I work it out is, measure the width, copy that across, and that'll give you a point. And that's not a bad point to set a um, pedestal, because it'll be equidistant from the end and the side, okay? I may change my mind later, but for now, that's the starting point. That's not a bad place to start. Okay, so again, same over here, measured across, I think it was about 11 centimetres, so I know it's about five and a half in from that edge, and there you go. So that would be my two points to put these brass pedestals. Let's see if it works. And that's the thing, you can only eyeball this to see what's really going to work. It'll be different for every ship. There are no hard and fast rules. So putting it on there, it's not too bad, but I don't know, it seems a little bit too much in the middle. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just slide these out to just on the edge of those two marks, give it a bit more width, which also makes it about the same width as the stabilizer fins you notice on the side of the hull. Now that's 15 centimeters, okay? So I've got a nice measurement there, know exactly what to do. Now I need to find the center point of my hull. So I'm going to do some measuring here from one side, and measuring from the other side, and scribble on this thing, and you know, basically, Keep trying to figure out where the hull is. I probably should have used a tape measure that I could have stretched right along. But um, this is what I had on my bench. So I've got a couple little marks there. The average of those is there. So that is my centre. I'll put a C on it. Okay. So if you've got a few little scribble marks, put a C and remember that's the centre. Now I know that that is where it should be and I've got to have this 15. I can put 7.5 on the centre and the 0 and the 15 on my rule will be the two points equidistant. And that is how they'll look. And as I said, they kind of match up with stabilizer bars. Use an eraser to rub off all the measurements and workings that you don't need. Do it now because you'll forget later and they always show through the paint. So we've got to get that onto there. So how big is it? Five millimeters. All right. Okay. I'm going to need a five millimeter drill. Yep, obviously, Harry. Yes. There we go. Five millimeter drill. I had it sitting there already prepared, yes. <laughs> Here's one I baked yesterday. Now, first thing is, you don't go with a big drill. First thing you want to do is poke a little pilot hole. All right, just gently poke it in there. You don't want to split the hull apart. This is the thing. You can drill in too vigorously and you will split that hull apart. So I'm now going to use a pin vise gently to drill in there and create a one millimeter hole. Okay, so this is... As I said, you don't want to be too rough at this point. All the work of filling and sanding and getting that hole together, you can wreck all that in seconds by getting in there and being too boyish. Okay, I've got a little pilot hole ready to go. Now, a block of wood. Yes, there it is. And we drill from the inside, pressing down. That way we're not going to basically flex the hull. We're just going to get that drill in there and push it through. And this is a good secure way of not splitting it. Touch comes, hull is still intact. There we go. Does it fit? That'll be the thing. Should do. It's all been measured. So that will go into there. No worries at all. So that's quite good. Yep. All right. Excellent. 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 Now to clean it up, I use a bigger drill bit and I just score around. And that'll remove the burrs. That's an old woodworking trick. 
just use a big tree you're basically almost like rebating but if you don't do it too hard you've just removed the little burrs so that's got that that's good now let's just do a little test here and make sure that it all works well so sticking my pedestal through there's little locking nuts okay put them on nice and gently you don't want anything on too firm at this stage and you never want to tighten this up so firm that you split the plastic so again gentleness care don't get all ruggish about it so on with me nuts hurry up Harry we've got a video to make here you're really making a bloody meal of this mate <laughs> smoking with quite a bit. okay there we go how does that look yep that's quite nice and it's nicely spaced next we've got to match those holes for the bottom of the pedestal on our wood base and I've already removed the markings from before that's why I use pencil and eraser and I made new markings measured them 15 centimeters apart and I know that's where the base uh, screw is going to need to go so again pilot hole and then pressing down on the drill with wood underneath okay same method same method applies it goes through the um, chipboard there a lot faster than it goes through the plastic I tell you oh, I wasn't as gentle and again we're going to need to clean that up with our big drill underneath we need to push in a lot harder because the bolt that we're putting in has a tapered head and it will need to recess into that so that the base of the base is flush yes it's all about the base okay and another one here come on hurry up Harry catch up with me here gee whiskers you know time's money let's get on with this come on the viewers are watching yeah screw 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 we've seen all this get on with it okay he's got his base together he's using his screwdriver get nice and tight these ones we can do tight I'll basically be taking off later when I varnish and stain that um, base but for now I want to make sure that part's tight okay moment of truth did our measurements line up now it's very tight as you can see you can't have one down and one up you've got to put them on both at the same time and that means I have a really really good fit not too tight not too loose and that spacing looks pretty spot on yep I am happy with that now I need to get the nuts in finger tight again nothing ever too super tight when you're dealing with metal and plastic because metal will basically split plastic yep just like that okay so they're in finger tight and what I will need to do is secure those nuts in place and the way I'm going to do this is yeah, that looks pretty hairy. Yes, I know. We're going to do this with some PVA white wood glue. The reason is you can super glue this, sure. But if you bump it too hard, super glue will shear and snap and your nuts will be loose on the inside. Using PVA white wood glue, it always has a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of shock resistance. So we'll leave that now to set overnight. Now, there's a couple of things I only noticed later on when looking at the kit after the review. There was no stand but that's not a problem I like to use the brass pedestals and I've got a quite a lot of these wooden bases so that's all right but on the box art it clearly shows all the torpedo booms and the torpedo netting and it really would have been nice to have that with the kit because the sides of the hull are very very plain there's just not much detail at all on there I'm going to put some nail tape on to improve the bow but this whole midships area is just devoid of any detail and it's just going to be boring. So I scratch made the booms myself. Now it was a bit tricky. The hardest part was working out all the angles and then I just made them up with um, styrene rods and some brass tubes. The trick was to work it all out with pencil and create a template is exactly right for this kit so I looked at photos and I looked at diagrams and plans of the ship and eventually worked out there were some important things there's a point here and a point here and if you match those up because that's a step down there and there's actually a start of the fourth one there if you match those up it all fits and it goes together rather well so you'll find I measured these two the booms will be 29 but the spacing is 28 except when you come to the end here because it's it's stepped down and because it's stepped down the angle is more so these are 28 and a half spaced 
So that gives you the whole length. By making the paper version, I could double check and see that it would fit. But not only that, I had a lovely template that allowed me to draw from. So let me show you how I did that. Now the method for doing this, I'm going to need some one millimeter diameter um, stock sprue there from Evergreen and their tubes, well, rods. And I need to cut those to 29. As I said, all the booms I worked out are 29 millimeters. Took me ages and lots of mathematics to work out all the angles and calculate from using drawings around. Now I have already pre drilled the wood with this hole. I'm not that good, I can't drill in midair. But I'm just showing you, you need to drill a hole through the end. Want to see how to do that? Go back and look at my Schnell boat video where I made a whole lot of um, stanchions and I worked out an easy way to drill into a tiny rod. So again, brass through, yes, just like doing the stanchions. Slow gap, it's just slow super glue. It's one that gives me a little more time. It's also a bit thicker, so it, it helps to fill little gaps and things. So, yep, put a little bit of that on there. And then I'll also need to make sure it stays at a right angle, because that is very important. So I'll use my cutting mat here to basically double check. Have I got a right angle? Yep, it all lines up. That's looking good. That super glue will set shortly, but I'll just put that aside. What I need to do now is, that little piece of brass that I put on there, that is a little hook rod that's going to go into the side of the hole. Now using my template, and I have taped it in place, I have all the positions for all the holes. I can't go wrong, I know this is going to work. And again, same sort of method, make sure that you create a little, basically, punch pilot spot, and using a 0.5mm drill in my pin vise, I can get that hole. Quite thick, this plastic. Yeah, it took a little while to drill through. Okay, now we'll just do a little test and see how our boom is going to look. Now, I don't need all of that brass rod, so I'm going to trim off quite a bit of it, only leave about probably five millimeters. That's all I'm going to need. That will go into that hole. Should fit nicely. Bit of a tap. And then setting it at the right angle, a bit hard now because everything's upside down. That's going to look terrific. All right, let's get on with the rest of them. My booms are looking quite nice and there's a bit of rigging that goes on them that'll add a bit more detail. There is supposed to be a supporting clamp in the middle of each one. Whether I'll get time to sort of scratch that or come up with something, it doesn't matter. You hardly see it in all the drawings and the photos unless you get the ones that are really close up. But anyhow, I think the effect is working really well and I'm pretty confident I'll just keep going with my holes and I can use my template for the other side. Now. This video is kind of getting a bit longer than I thought, so I won't bore you with any more of this. I'll get on, finish it for next time, and then we can catch up and I can do some of the nail taping, subscribing the hull, adding those sort of details. Then we'll start painting it and getting the wood deck on, and she'll really start coming together. Now, if you're enjoying my videos, please click the like. It really helps me because that kicks the algorithm into gear and more people get to see my videos. Also, if you've got something to say, comment. Please let me know, just be respectful. Subscribe to my channel, that's always good. Click that bell notification, then you don't miss any of my videos. And if you really want to help me out, you can join Patreon, or you can become a YouTube member. That way you'll get my videos early and advert free. Plus there's a whole lot of other little benefits that I throw in. You'll have to join to find out. Alright, that's enough for now. So it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Houdini.